Welcome to Clean Cow, a natural system for dealing with dairy shed effluent. We have three main objectives. Firstly, the reduction of water usage within the dairy shed. Secondly, the separation of the solid material from the liquid. And thirdly, turning the wastewater into a valuable resource. To successfully reduce the amount of water used each milking in a cow shed situation, there are three main things that we must look at. Firstly, the refrigeration water or coolant water, the plant wash water, and the yard washdown water. Now, the coolant water and the plant wash water can be diverted and stored and the yard wash down using large hose, as you see here, is using large quantities of water, far more than the quantity of the coolant and plant wash. Whereas using water blast technology as seen here, the amount of water that is recycled is actually more than what the water blaster actually uses. In yard wash down, we can go from using over four to 5,000 litres with a large hose to using only under 1,000 litres with the water blaster. As seen here, in areas such as the pit and that, the water blaster needs to be shielded so that the solid material is not thrown over all the milking gear. But the water blaster, which only uses 40 litres a minute, is a far more efficient way of cleaning the yard and transferring the solid material from the yard down to the area where it can be treated. The cow shed waste is delivered to the solid waste digesters where the solid material is filtered through a bark filter and the liquid is then pumped on to the decanting tanks. The decanting tank consists of four chambers. The water is fed in at the top and extracted from the middle of the tank onto the next tank. The tanks themselves are set up with systems so that it can be purged either at the top or the bottom back to the solid waste digesters. The liquid material is fed in at the top into the solid waste digesters and once the liquid is drained off the worms are happy and turning the solid material, the cow manure, into a nice compost. You'll notice the worms are very active and as long as they don't get too wet, they're happy to survive there. Hence the reason for the covers over the solid waste digesters to keep the rainwater out. The decanting tanks in the first chamber, a lot of solid material is collected on top. This is purged back into the solid waste digesters and as the water goes through each tank the amount of solids is reduced considerably. There are four chambers and the final chamber um, the water is relatively free of solids. As you can see that is the second chamber and it's less than the first. The water is then fed to the tunnel houses. The tunnel houses are set up with bark 
in the first two and then sawdust. They are a displacement system, so the water fed into the first ones displaces through until the water comes out the end. The plants I've grown here are tomatoes and as you can see rhubarb. They transpirate a lot of the water but they are just grown hydroponically in the tunnel houses in the cowshed waste. Once the worms have dealt with the solid material, it turns into a beautiful compost that's light and organic. The worms are still there doing their business, but the material that's produced is high in nutritional value. Not only that, the worms themselves are a valuable asset at $80 a kilo on the market. And so that's the produce coming from the solid material. The liquid is drained off of, out of the tunnel houses and as you can see is quite clear. No solids left in it and the liquid itself is also extremely high nutrients and valuable. These trials were carried out on Richard and Debbie Farm in the Wangaripo for six months from November through to March and now we have all the necessary um, data required to go into production.